All right. So we're gonna do a full fish room tour, looking at the fish room. Uh, everything's down here in the fish room. Everything's changed. Uh, we're even gonna go outside of the fish room proper, outside of the tented area here, and uh, see what we got up there, and uh, plans for the future, what's got changed, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, let me step behind the camera, and we'll see what you all can see. That way, I know I'll get everything in frame. All right, so first thing that's bugging me is this light's not in the middle of the tank. Um, so my 55 here. I'm lazy. I'm a fat fish guy. Someone pull me up a chair. You notice in my 55 here, the angels are gone. Um, I don't know if you got to see the rainbows that I had down here in this tank. Uh, they were in this tank for a little while. They were, uh, they got moved upstairs. I had some rainbows and some uh, head and tail light tetras that, that were in this tank. They moved upstairs with the angels and uh, went into the living room's 55 gallon tank uh, for a little more schooling. But we do have some sword tails in here. He has interest in that female right there, right now. And we do have a trio of black mollies in here. Uh, both of these species will probably just be uh, temporary housed in here. They'll go into probably a more breeding friendly tank for them. They may stay in here but more than likely I'll move them into the tank uh, into a separate tank just for uh, more breeding stuff. Uh, more breeding focus. I've got my bristle nose there. What is that? Ah, it looks like I may have dropped a screw in there. My breeding box fell off the side of the tank and I just had it up there just to store it. But I had it there uh, when I was catching the angels and rainbows and such and uh, knocked it off. The, let's say mama crib, put my crib babies and uh, the mama crib in here and there's the mama crib there uh, there's one of the babies there and I think I've got I guess four I don't know if they're still called fry at that size or just juvenile cribs in here and then the adult female You can see one, there's one hiding behind the java moss back over there, and down under that wood there. In here, scattered around, are six of the peppered quarry cats. Um, I would give their Latin name, but I'd screw it all up. Um, so I believe that's what we have in here is... Uh, the small crib. Oh, forgot these guys. My lone two zebra danio dither fish. Uh, we got the the cribs, the sword tail. I would say trio, but there's four of them: three females and a male. The trio of black mollies and the quarry cats. Oh, and bristle nose. I have five bristle nose. Just the standard browns or chocolates or whatever. Um, two different ages really on those. And so we'll swing around here. This is where my 20 longs were. 
and I've got this tank here which is going to be a project it did not pass it was a, a used tank it did not pass the leak test um, it has a an area on the bottom that I believe is the issue on the seal so we're going to work on resealing it we swing back over here to this little rack that I made here now we've got 20 longs on the bottom and I'm going to put tens across the top made the rack and pardon the mess I've got a mess everywhere trying a selfie stick for the first time didn't like it but I made the rack here uh, out of some 2x6's and 2x4's and made it 24 inches from front to back and four feet from one side to the other and it's 46 inches tall to the top of these posts here and that was to really match the other rack over there we'll get to in a minute the reason it's 24 inches deep this way is so that it will hold the 20 longs down there it's actually 25 and a half I believe um, yeah, the video of me making it didn't turn out too well. But uh, it can hold a tank that's, with the way that it's made with the boards laying flat like that, it can hold tanks that are 20 inches long, 24 inches long, eight, or not long, long, wide, whatever way you put this way. Uh, 20 inches, 24 inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, it can uh, do all those. So if I were to put a, say, a, a 20 long up there, I could put it long ways and it would work. I could put a 20 high up there long ways or front to back. I put 10s up there either way. I can put a 40 breeder up there. Um, so a lot of uh, options there. So I've got two 10s up here right now. Got water in them. I got this one a heater going on it. The other one's nothing in it right now I uh, don't have the filter turned on and on either one of them yet and then down here in the 20s we'll start with this one over here I put a lot under it a four foot lot and something that did not cross my mind until after I'd already done it is a four foot lot will not fit under a four foot board when you have the supports on the side over here holding the four foot boards up making the hole under there smaller than four feet so it's a little diagonal but it worked and down in this tank I don't know if we can zoom in and see anybody get your finger out of in front of the lens We've got some, there we go, everybody's hiding up there. Java moss and some plants and stuff up here, uh, hanging out on top of the filter. And then we've got some cherry shrimp bouncing around in there. Moss ball and a bunch of these. Snails. All right. So the tank in the middle. It's full of pots and bricks and rocks and all that stuff. And of course, they won't be up front now that I'm here in front of the tank. But somewhere in there, I've got uh, three convicts, or at least there was a moment ago, unless they've taken one of them out. Um, and I have recently moved them from this tank to that tank, and when I moved them, or shortly after I moved them, I found fry in that tank. So... We still zoomed in 
We are better. Sorry about that. Um, so I should have a breeding pair and apparently more fry. I don't know if y'all can make it out or not. There's more fry in this tank. Again. So they have laid eggs in that tank in the last three or four days, I would say, to have them at that size. And then there were fry in this tank. And that's the bad thing about this gravel, this pea gravel. Or, uh, yeah. I guess this is pea gravel over here. It's hard to tell the fry in it because the fry will get down b b between the gravels and uh, make it difficult to see them. But I've got a under gravel filter running on this one with a couple power heads and we may change it up and do something different but other than those few little fry in there we don't have anything in that one yet. Um, that's for a future project. We'll start on the bottom down here. Finger out of in front of the lens. Here we have the Maltese shell dwellers. And these four here, you can see three there and one over there. Let's see, where is it? Make it over there. These four stay right above those shells there. And the fifth one wanders off. Get under the filter and under the heater in different spots. So I'm not sure if it just doesn't like the shells that I have in there or if it's more of a wanderer. Speaking of that, there it is over here. Yeah, my thermometer fell down. The kids thought it was a toy. But these four stay right over the shells. That one maybe has decided the filter is its shell. It hangs out over there a lot. And we'll move up top here. Got a couple rainbow cichlids. And I've decided that I need to focus more on my aquascaping and stuff like that. So just throwing fish in the tank and letting it go. Part of the hobby is, at least in my mind, part of the hobby is decorating your tank. And I'm doing the channel to show people what they can do and help beginners out. And if I just throw fish in a tank and let it go, yeah, you can do that. But most people will want to put stuff in their tank for decorations. Let's see, this tank here, a lot help? No. This is the, the tank that was the, I don't know what you would call it, bad juju tank or bad luck tank or whatever, whatever I had so much trouble with it. Um, but right now we've got Two males and two females cherry barbs in there. There's a lone female guppy. I had a trio of guppies, but I have been trying since June to keep guppies. And I don't know what is wrong with all the guppies that I've been getting. I've tried four different tanks. Couldn't tell you how many guppies. And pretty continuously since uh since June. Different parts of the house and uh, I don't know if it's my source or the source of guppies or what it is. All the other fish in the tank will do fine but I will lose the guppies every time. So this one is the only uh, 
one left of the trio that I had and hiding back under the heater there. You can kind of make out a little shadow of him. It's a little sparkling grommy. So, some basic free decorations I have in there. I can do something a little better. I'm down in this tank down here. have a Anubius there that I just got. I haven't taken out of the pot and put it where I want it yet because I don't know where I want it yet. And I had a breeding pair of convicts. Uh, the first pair I had breed. And I moved them into this tank after I pulled their fry. And uh, apparently the male didn't like that and wound up killing the female. So now it's just him in here by himself for now. And I'll figure out um, I might move him in with somebody else or get some females put in here with him to see if he'll pair up again. Usually they will. But for now, he's in there doing his bachelor thing. I added lights under these racks. I'll get to how I built the racks later, but I added lights under here. And future plans is I'm gonna put a piece of plywood hanging down, or maybe a curtain hanging down, so that we don't have to deal with this glare in the future. And I'll either put them on a hinge or a curtain or something. And in here, of course, they will be hiding. Sorry about the dirty glass, and the dirty tank, and the dirty everything. I need to clean. Now you can make out under here. Female crib there. And... If you can tell, I need to grab a back. This is what I was talking about with the... Uh, with the tetra color granules, tropical color granules I've been using. Um, the fish aren't taking to them too well and they fungus up a whole lot faster than the, the flakes ever did. Now there's the male under here. My LFS got some, uh, got a batch of cribs in. I haven't seen cribs there in forever. The ones that I had before I had to drive a distance to get them. And uh, my local one here in the same town got some cribs in, and I just went ahead and got another pair. Uh, being that I didn't have a mature male in the batch that I had, and I may uh, look to introduce the other female in, in here to see if we can get some spawning going. In here are my jewel cichlids. There's one there and one there. That may be the dominant one. Holding some pretty good color. And the third one. Eyes ah, somewhere. filter up. It may be under there. It likes to go under there some. Oh! It's right there in front of my face hiding. Blending in with that black background. Looks like it's been taking a little bit of a beating from the others. But that's part of how they do. I 
this is one of the downsides to having this type of DIY lids. It's flexible, it bends, and it gets down in there. And over here, I need a light on this tank, but I don't have it right now. This is a little 10 gallon. And let's see, maybe I can turn the light on, on the, here, and we can see this is where the fry. If you can make them out or not. The convict fry are uh, growing out. Just a little 10 gallon over here to the side. And um, I'll probably move this tank up top maybe in a few more weeks. I did have the tins on this plastic shelf here. Now it's just kind of turning into a catch-all. Over here in this 29, I've got one of the runt angles that we had. Over here, um, it's Big Brothers. We're picking on the smaller ones, so if you recall, I pulled out two and put them in with the cribs. And uh, One of them got beat up pretty good. Didn't make it. But this one, doing good. And he is in with a couple of the Pictus cats here. And wherever the other one is, it hides. They both hide, but this one thinks it's going to get food. These came down from the upstairs tank that the rainbows and angels went into. There's the one back behind the filter. And this tank is just sitting on top of a old computer desk thing that I've kind of take halfway taken apart. Um, I thought I could fit a 20 high down here, but not so much luck. Um, I could fit a 10 down there, maybe one day. But no need right now. The black substrate that I have in this tank and in the shrimp tank and the cichlid 20 over there is uh, black blasting sand. It's working great for me. It's really cheap. Um, this stuff in here is the Eco Complete that I had. The white sand, like I have down here in the Shelleys, is pool filter sand. This tank and that one down there, and the jewel cichlids all have um, pea pebbles from the home improvement store. This tank here, substrate, is a mix of an aquarium gravel and a sand of some sort, it appears to be. Um, it was a substrate that was given to me. And actually the, the gravel and the undergravel filter was given to me as well. But it looks to be the same consistency as the, the pea pebble that I've purchased for the others. Uh, the 55 also has the pea pebble in it. All right, so I have redid some of my electric and I don't have two big extension cords coming across through here and wrapping all up here. I've actually hung my air pump up there, um, which actually helps out with the flow of the air. It reduces the possibility of it softening back when we lose power and it, uh, you get gravity helping you press, uh, push your air pressure out. I've got this light suspended just on some string. The lights down here, I've got uh, 
bolted onto the back. Um, I have this the lights on this whole rack on a remote, and the rest of them I just turn on manually. Um, over here, have you seen the heater yet? I don't remember. I got this little heater here, and it uh, turned up all the way. It heats this area inside this little tinted area. It heats it up about 10 to 15 degrees above the rest of the basement. So that's good. It's not where I want it to be, but it's it's better than nothing. Um, move, my little, move my little storage thing here. And got a new 20 long sitting there with a phone and tripods and chargers and stuff. Bucket full of uh, substrate. The blasting sand stuff. Alright, so let's step out. I added a another curtain here over the door because the the doorway that I had was a big opening in the the tarp that goes around here so uh, I use this to cover it and create another barrier to kind of keep some more um, heat in there and it'll be a little bit of a mess down here and I'm sorry about that I'll uh, just apologize now. I'm not the best at cleaning. And here is how I tap into my water line there, my cold water line. Use PEX pipe and shark bite fittings. Just came down to this uh, hookup on the sink. And you can't beat free, free sink. Um, the faucet on the sink already had a hose ending on it oh there went the light apparently my battery is low um, so we'll go quickly now because it's going to be dark the faucet already had the ending for the hose uh, future plans is I got a water heater right here I can tap into the water heater for the um, for the sink the drain line I just ran if you can see here the black hose a sump line. Um, spin you around here real quick. Here we have a 55. It's the first time it's actually been on camera, and uh, it's been under under cover for a while. I've had it, and uh, it's missing the center brace, so I just made a wood one here. Holds the water fine. Um, got it used really good deal um, so yeah like I said this is a mess but this is my little we'll call it studio area most of my videos I make it here um, it's junked up got my cups and drink and stuff over there stuff left over from from some videos that I've made um, all that kind of stuff. Um, and here's this here. Seventy five gallon with a stand. Found it on Facebook, I think it was. Gave uh, fifty dollars for it and the stand. Did not realize how heavy seventy-five gallon tanks were. And my thoughts of me carrying it by myself, you know, weren't that great. Um, currently, I've got a couple power filters on it. I ran electric the way that I run electric with extension cords and power strips temporarily over here from the fish room. Um, I've got some 300 watt heaters in it, a couple of them. Only one of them's plugged up right now. And I need to get lights for it and tops on it. But uh, the two filters I have right now, this one is rated for up to 60 gallons. That one's rated for up to 30 gallons. 
I feared for now since there's nothing in it but some stowaway snails that I'm assuming came with the used substrate that I put in there. Uh, stowaway snails and some driftwood, which you can't see, of course. But something's going to come in there. And then my pretty blue tarp background. There's the outside of the fish room, my lighting, my table, my little chair. All right. Well, that's about it. There's not much more going on down here. Um, the other side over there, just full of some kids' toys and storage and stuff. But I figured I haven't showed you this stuff out here. You haven't seen where I filmed the videos at before. Um, I don't know. That's what it is. What it is. Uh, maybe one day I'll expand this on out to the proper fish room to enclose the whole uh, area up to the 75, 55 and stuff. Um, one day. But for now, that's what it is. Uh, got future stuff coming up, uh, future projects. Um, not sure, like always, not sure what's the next thing to, to happen, but there's always something going on. So, uh, until next time, leave some comments, thumbs up, thumbs down, whichever you feel. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, uh, the share button, all those buttons. You know what to do. We, do, we go through this all the time. <laughs> so we'll see you. Let me see if I can figure out how to turn this thing off.